Pastor Ed here with Daily Devotions for Tuesday, for Thursday, rather, October the 5th, 2023. Our reading for today is taken from the second chapter of Acts, verses 42 to 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day they spent much time together in the temple. They broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. We were talking, when we left off yesterday, we were talking about biblical servanthood and about the fact that sometimes we think of servanthood in terms of putting ourselves down or putting ourselves second. And the authors of Life Keys say that nothing really Uh, could be further from the truth, and they go on to talk about six principles of biblical um, servanthood. And we're going to touch on four of them today, and we'll finish up with the other two tomorrow. The first principle, they say, is to serve from a place of fullness, not emptiness. Jesus stands ready to fill your nets, they say. Just as Jesus once filled the disciples' nets with fish, he also blesses each of us so that we might in turn be a blessing to others. Servanthood, in other words, isn't about doing the things that we weren't equipped to do, no matter how noble a gesture might be. Rather, it has more to do with sharing from our abundance. Like the early Christians described in today's reading, if we devote ourselves to God's word and teaching to each other, God will not only show us where to serve, God will also bless our serving. For the past few weeks, we've been considering all the different ways in which God has uniquely gifted us. Servanthood then isn't so much about being forced to do what we dislike or don't feel competent in, as it is an opportunity for us to joyously use the gifts that God has given to us and to serve in the way or ways that come most naturally to us. Servants who follow God, who allow God to fill their cup, write the authors of Life Keys, are free to be used for God's purposes. They are secure, solid, and healthy enough to devote themselves to purposes bigger than themselves. John Brody, who played for the San Francisco 49ers when I was a kid growing up, besides being the team's star quarterback, also used to hold the ball for the kicker on field goals and extra points. And although many other quarterbacks then and now often take on this rather menial task, a reporter once actually asked Brody about it. Why are you the highest paid player on the team as well as their most valuable player, he said, holding the ball for field goals and extra points? Well, said Brody, if I didn't, it would fall over. Brody, you see, understood completely that being the star quarterback and the highest paid player on the team didn't mean that he was excused from doing whatever he could for the good of the 49ers in their pursuit of victory on the football field. I think that's what the authors of Life Keys are trying to get at here. Biblical servanthood does not originate from an inferior position. Instead, it develops out of a position of strength. The strengths and abilities that God has so graciously given us in order that we might share them, share them with and use them to benefit others. The second principle of biblical servanthood is biblical servants ensure that their own needs are met so that they can focus on the needs of others. Wayne Cordero is a pastor out in Hawaii who's been hailed as a, as a modern-day apostle because of his church planting abilities and successes. Pastor Cordero has started over 20 churches himself. One of them grew from 50 members to over 1,700 in just 12 years. And then in 1995, he started yet another church. Within five short years, attendance at their weekend services had grown to more than 7,000, making it one of the fastest-growing churches in America. Now, you might think that given these tremendous successes that Pastor Cordero is a workaholic, who spends every working minute being consumed by the the numerous tasks necessary to help such a rapidly growing church continue to expand and increase its ministries. On the contrary, Pastor Cordero talks frequently about stepping back and going on retreats in order to discern just exactly what God is calling him to do. He writes, My retreats usually consist of getting away for two or three days to a neighboring island where I hold myself up in a hotel to pray. It's during these times that I am best able to hear direction for my life and direction for the church. Pastor Cordero has obviously learned that we must take care of ourselves first before we can lead and serve others. All too often, pastors and key lay people neglect their own needs, including their families, and keep 
trying to serve until finally their gas tank is bone dry and they're just running on fumes. That's also why we hear so much about burnout these days. If we don't take care of ourselves, we won't be able to care for others, not for very long at least. The third principle of biblical servanthood is finding ways to use our giftedness for God requires commitment. God leaves the choice of serving or not serving in our hands. We choose our paths and our attitudes, write the authors, but the more we let God influence our values and our passions, the more we're available for his choices. The story is told about Beethoven, a man who was not known for his social graces. Because of his deafness, he, he found conversation difficult, even humiliating. Interaction with other people, therefore, uh, was somewhat limited. One day, though, he heard about the death of a friend's son. Beethoven hurried to the friend's house, overcome with grief, but, but he had no words of comfort to offer. However, he saw a piano in the corner of the room, and for the next half hour, he played his friend's piano, pouring out his emotions in the most eloquent way he could. When he finished playing, he simply left, and the friend later remarked that no one else's visit had meant so much. Sometimes we might not feel as though we are serving in the right spot or that we're even capable of serving, but if we open ourselves up to God, he'll show us not only where we can best serve, but also the specific way in which to serve. And the fourth principle is, as we open our hearts to God's purposes, we become available to move to the places where God wants us to be. The noted economist John Kenneth Galbraith, Galbraith in his autobiography, A Life in Our Times, wrote about the devotion of Emily Gloria Wilson, the family's housekeeper. It had been a wearying day, and, and Galbraith asked Emily to hold all of his telephone calls while he took a nap. And while he was napping, however, the phone rang. It was President Lyndon Johnson, LBJ, calling from the White House. Get me Ken Galbraith, he said. This is Lyndon Johnson. Emily responded, he's sleeping, Mr. President. He said not to disturb him. And LBJ snapped back, well, wake him up. I want to talk to him. But Emily stood her ground. I'm sorry, Mr. President, but I work for him, not you. When Galbraith later returned the president's call, Johnson could scarcely control his pleasure. Tell that woman, he said to Galbraith, that I want her here in the White House. The world is always telling us where to go and what we should do. Even as Christian people, we can sometimes be led astray, but we need to remember that we answer to a higher power. We work for God and no one else, not even the president. The key to fulfillment, write our authors, is resting in the knowledge that you are within God's will rather than engaging in a futile search for worldly happiness. Well, as I say, tomorrow we'll conclude with the, the fifth and sixth principles of biblical stewardship. Until then, take care. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye now.